I don't know about you, but I grew up eating a lot of potatoes and I love potatoes. Whether they're mashed, fried, french fried, or in an au gratin with a lot of cheese, I can't get enough of them. And using sous vide is a very convenient way to cook them and has several benefits over a few different traditional methods. I'm gonna tell you what those benefits are and how to get the most out of your sous vide potatoes coming up next on Amazing Food Made Easy. I'm Jason Logson from Amazing Food Made Easy and president of the International Sous Vide Association. And today we are diving into all things potato, one of my favorite things on earth to eat in all of its different incarnations. There's a lot of different ways you can cook a potato and there's a lot of different types of potatoes too. So it always amuses me when someone says, well, why would I use sous vide on a potato when I can cook it in X, Y, or Z ways? It's because you're trying to do something specific. It's the same reason you would boil a potato, you would bake a potato, you would grill a potato, you could cut it up and pan fry it, you could slice it thinly with some cheese and cream and bake it in the oven. None of these methods are better than another one. They're just accomplishing different things. It's the same thing with sous vide. Sous vide, it makes the process very easy. It's pretty hands off, so you don't have to worry about anything. And you're not adding external flavors to the potatoes. Something like baking or pan frying adds a lot of external flavor. And something like boiling a potato pulls flavor out of the potatoes. Where sous vide doesn't do that, keeps all the flavor inside. So if you're looking for a very, very potato-y potato, sous vide is a great option for it. So as with most things, make sure what you're trying to accomplish, sous vide is the right method to do that. I'm not saying you should take a whole bag of potatoes and throw them in a sous vide bag and you're gonna end up with baked potatoes. <laughs> they don't work that way. But if you're trying to come up with a really pure potato flavor, then sous vide is a great method to do it. So what's the perfect time and temperature to use for sous vide potatoes? You have several different options, and that's partially because you have different types of potato with different starch makeups. You might want to use different temperatures for each, but for me, I like to use 184. That's my go-to temperature for most vegetables. It's something that's in between that 183 to 185 range where all the changes in vegetables start to really quickly happen. So it's a temperature that I like to use for most of my vegetables because I get the best results out of it for most of the things that I'm trying to do. The timing for potatoes can be all over the place. Depends if you're cooking red potatoes, baby potatoes, new potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes, russet potatoes. They're different and have different starch contents and need to be broken down at different times. Also depends if you're cooking whole potatoes or small potatoes. But for most of my sous vide potatoes, I like to break it down into smaller sizes. So if they are new potatoes or fingerling potatoes, they might be okay whole. A lot of times I'll even cut those in half. If I'm using bigger potatoes, I will often dice them. It can be a coarse dice. You can also slice them thinly if you want to make it more of an au gratin style presentation, especially if you're gonna put a little more liquid in the bag that you want to meld with the potato a little bit better. For potatoes in one of those forms, it usually is 30 to 60 minutes for it to break down. Um, a lot of times I will need to test it during the cooking process. You can carefully squeeze through the bag. If you're doing something like mashed potatoes, you can really cook the heck out of it without too much downside. So then I'll usually just go 60 minutes and not worry about it because I know that I'm just gonna be breaking it down anyway. So let's dive into the process for how to actually sous vide potatoes. This is one of my favorite ways to cook potatoes these days because it does come out with a more pure flavor. I'm also gonna link up my simple sous vide potato master recipe. It makes it easy to perfectly cook your potatoes anytime you want, so you can use them in any of your favorite potato dishes. The process I'm gonna step you through is the one that I use for new potatoes or diced potatoes. I think new potatoes or fingerling potatoes have a good visual appeal to them, and they're very good in sous vide, so I like to use these a lot. So the first step is to break the potatoes down into the size that you want. Most of the time, I like my potatoes to be a half inch to an inch thick. I think that's a little bit easier on the sous vide side to make sure that they're cooked all the way through without cooking the outside edges. And that's why I like to use new potatoes or fingerling potatoes because they're about the same size as I'm looking for and I can just cut them in half or quarter them. But if you have bigger potatoes, you can dice them, you can slice them, you can use whatever type of cutting technique you want to get them down to that half inch to inch thickness. I'll then put them in the sous vide bag and I'll add some butter or olive oil and usually some fresh herbs either some rosemary, some sage, some thyme. They all work really well. Just a few sprigs in there to help infuse the potatoes with that flavor. I'll also add salt because salt is good and adds flavor to everything. So a little bit of salt in the bag as well. Then you're ready to seal the bag. Before you seal it, you wanna make sure you put everything in a single layer. It does no good if you cut everything up into small pieces and then seal it in a big hunk. You want it to be in a single layer throughout the bag and you might need to use a few different bags for this. 
pretty much any type of heat safe, food safe plastic bag will work. But when it comes to vegetables, things like Ziploc freezer brand bags can sometimes struggle at the higher heat. So I usually like to use edge vacuum sealer bags like a food saver or chambered vacuum sealer bags work as well. And even if you don't have a chambered vacuum sealer, like most people don't, you can buy the bags and you can use that to cook it just using the water displacement method like you would with Ziplocs. Next, you just need to prepare the water bath. You can use any container that will stand up to 180 degree temperatures. So you can use a stock pot, a polycarbonate container, which basically means fancy plastic. <laughs> um, Lapavi, Rubbermaid, and Cambro all make really good versions of that. They have lots of different sous vide accessories like racks, magnets, and lids, which can be very helpful when you're cooking vegetables. Some people even use coolers because it holds water very, very well. But at these higher temperatures, some coolers can start to degrade a little bit. So I tend to stick to the polycarbonate because they are designed for hot water. <laughs> you want to set your sous vide machine to the desired temperature. As I said, I like 184, but whatever you have decided on, you can set it for that. And for vegetables, I like to let the water bath heat up. Potatoes aren't quite as critical because they are going 30 to 60 minutes. But not a lot's going to happen to potatoes until they start to get pretty hot. They don't start cooking or tenderizing at lower temperatures. And if your sous vide machine heats slowly, then I like to let the water preheat before I put it in the potatoes. That said, the water will be hot at 183. If you're more comfortable putting it in when it is, you know, at a lower temperature, go ahead if you're worried about burning yourself because you can scald yourself at these hotter temperatures that you cook vegetables at. When you put it in, you want to make sure that all the potatoes are below the water line in the sous vide machine because otherwise they won't cook. If food is above the water in sous vide, it's not going to cook and it's just going to foster bacterial growth, which you don't want, and your potatoes will be hard. So make sure everything is below. I love using sous vide magnets. That's the most effective way I've found to keep all my food below the water. Next, you just let it cook. We're talking about potatoes, so we're looking at 30 to 60 minutes. You have a lot of time to prepare the rest of your food. You could go mow the lawn, you could play some video games, or you could just sit and stare at the wall if that's your thing. It's one of the things I love about sous vide. You don't have to be focused on what is happening in the sous vide machine. You can just do other things while it's cooking. Once you hit about 30 minutes, you probably want to start testing the tenderness of the potatoes. You can use a wooden spoon and kind of jab the bag with it a little bit to see uh, how much give there is. You can also pull it out and squeeze it. It will be hot, but you can squeeze it to see how tender the potatoes are. When they finally reach the tenderness you're looking for, between 30 and 60 minutes normally, you want to pull them out and then you're ready to serve them. There's not a lot you need to do to potatoes to serve them, especially when they come out of the sous vide machine. One of my favorite things to do is to toss them with a little bit of butter, a few more fresh herbs, a little bit of basil and some Parmesan cheese. You have amazing side dish. You can also cook them a little bit longer and then you can mash them. A pro tip that I heard was to mash them in the bag. So I'll take an empty wine bottle while the potatoes are still in the bag and then you can just roll it back and forth and it will mash them in the bag. I'll do this for Thanksgiving. I will bag the potatoes with the cream and the butter and everything that goes into the mashed potatoes. I'll seal them, I'll cook them, when they're done, I will roll them out with a wine bottle and I'll chill them. And then two days later, we'll reheat them at my parents' house, a hundred miles away in Philly. It's a great way to remove stress from Thanksgiving and to uh, make some really good mashed potatoes. But regardless of how you like your potatoes, you can now make perfectly cooked sous vide potatoes every single time. The consistency is great. The texture and the flavor that comes through is really amazing. As I said, this isn't replacing every way to cook a potato. I still roast potatoes, I bake potatoes, I love potatoes in all their forms. But if you're looking for a specific type of texture and flavor, it's hard to beat the sous vide process for it. I highly recommend checking out my sous vide quick start course. It's available for free at afmeasy.com slash quick start. I also do a lot of work with the ISVA, including video demos, showcases, cook alongs, and a lot of other really fun things. You can check that out at afmeasy.com slash quick start. Until next time, I'm Jason Logston.